I am in your head, dude. You can't get me with the mixes. I think I live. I love this. Insane. <laughs> oh my god. The most insane read of my life, dude. Oh my god. I. I don't know what you want. Holy. <laughs> so, I'm not a Tekken player. Or, I guess more accurately, I wasn't. I've never played any of the older Tekken games. I bought Tekken 7 when it was on sale and downloaded it, but I never got around to playing it. Whoopsies! Truth be told, I only just recently even began playing fighting games when I picked up Street Fighter 6 late last year. Jumping into my first real experience with a traditional fighter, I thought I'd suck hot ass, but ended up really clicking with JP and managing to climb all the way to Diamond. We did it. We fucking did it. Around that time, the closed beta for Tekken 8 went live, and though I had no previous experience or interest in the series, I decided to watch some videos about it. To me, it just looked like Tekken, but a lot of people were saying that the game felt great, and it did look relatively enjoyable. But I was still in the camp of not that interested. Shortly after the beta ended, though, something changed. Well, more specifically, a new trailer was released that changed my opinion, even if only slightly. Les couchers de soleil sur la scène me rappellent ce que je dois protéger. Je vais m'en charger. Get ready for the next battle. Tekken 8. New challenge. Accepte ta défaite. Tu as perdu d'avance. Victor, chevalier. Bandai Namco released a trailer for one of the game's newcomers, Victor Chevalier, a super spy cyberpunk samurai hybrid that dual wields knives and has a fucking gun. This guy is so fucking cool, I can completely forgive the fact that he's French. This character almost instantly caught my attention, and my position on the game was decisively changed from not interested to still not interested, but if I did play Tekken, I would totally main this guy. I mean, come on. You look at this asshole and tell me he wasn't made for me. Fast forward to the end of January, where the full game is released and people start making videos on it. I hadn't been keeping up with the pre-launch hype, but from what I was hearing, the game was doing pretty well, with people calling it the best Tekken game in years, and some even claiming it to be one of the best fighting games in general in years. This started to pique my interest a bit, but I was still worried that a game like Tekken would be too complicated for me. I could fumble my way around Street Fighter pretty well with its surprisingly simple controls, I play on Classic, don't worry, and fights being relegated to a 2D plane. Tekken was another beast. It's more nuanced mechanics, in addition to the fact that there's an entire extra axis to worry about, almost certainly meant I'd spend the majority of my time in this game getting my ass handed to me, and as someone with a very fragile ego, that's no good. That mindset was pretty short-lived, however, as there was one particular creator I watched, Maximilian Dude, who not only played Victor, the one character I was interested in, but made him look extremely fun to play. This was the point where I went from not interested to... Okay, actually, I'm really interested now. After downloading and playing the demo, firmly cementing that this was in fact a game I could have fun playing, I'm gonna show you how it's done, so get ready to take some notes. What was that about showing me how it's done, you dumb motherfucker? I did what any strong, working-class man would do, and asked my wife if I could have it as an early birthday present. Totally didn't ruin a surprise or anything like that. I then downloaded it, overnight, because our internet is horrendous, and next morning, began my Tekken journey. I had heard before playing that the arcade quest was essentially this game's tutorial, so I decided to start there. After the opening battle and heat system tutorial, the game lets you pick who you want to play as going forward. And I, of course, chose Victor. Boy, I hope the character I picked to be my main doesn't end up being one of the most hated characters in the game again. Victor is the most brain-dead fucking character in the game. He's a brain-dead pile of shit. 
Tekken is what is typically known as a four-button fighting game. You have four buttons. Mind-blowing. What this means is that each of your buttons, notated as one through four, correspond to one of your character's limbs. One for left arm, two for right arm, three for left leg, four for right leg. Any attack you have access to will come from one of these buttons, a combination of them, and sometimes a directional input, as those also change what attacks are used. Attacks are typically split into three main categories, highs, middles, and lows. Highs can be blocked standing, but can also be crouched under to avoid them entirely. These typically serve as your fast, low-risk pokes with minimal, if any, punish potential, but a read from your opponent could leave you wide open. Lows can only be blocked crouching. These are primarily used to open an opponent's defense, but are usually much more punishable if blocked. And finally, middles can only be blocked standing and will hit you if you crouch. These attacks are where your big damage comes from. Most launchers, or combo starters, are mids, so it's typically good to default to stand blocking and only crouching if you read a low or a high coming your way. Now, as you probably know, one thing that sets Tekken apart from many of its traditional fighting game contemporaries is its nature of being a 3D fighting game, meaning that in addition to moving forward and backwards, you can also move side to side. So where in something like Street Fighter, your best options for defense is just blocking or spacing out a move to whiff punish it, Tekken allows you to sidestep attacks, leaving your opponent wide open to whatever big meaty buttons you have access to. Ooh. <laughs> This is an extremely important part of Tekken's identity, and more importantly, its gameplay, as you can more finely position yourself in a place that's advantageous to you, whether that's to avoid an incoming attack, or even to shift where your opponent flies during a combo. Oh my god, the sidestep of my fucking life! What? New to Tekken 8 is the previously mentioned heat system. You'll always start around with a full heat bar that can only be used once. Activating it requires one of two things. Either A, you use a heat burst. This is a small armored attack that instantly activates your heat meter upon usage, but costs a chunk of your meter to actually use. Early on, this will be your safe go-to option for activating heat. And B, landing a heat engager. Heat engagers are a category of moves that all characters have a few of. Successfully landing one on an opponent, some exceptions apply, the screen will freeze momentarily, your heat will activate, and you'll do this little run-up animation that leaves you at enough advantage that you can use pretty much any pressure tools you want. This soon enough became my primary means of activating heat, as the reward for doing so is significantly higher than with a heat burst. That being said, Heat Burst is not without its merits, as its nature of being an armored attack that gives you plus frames on hit or block can instantly snuff an opponent that's being oppressively offensive. So, now that Heat is active, what's it do? Well, that actually depends on the character you play as. To put it simply, you get super buffed for the duration of the meter. Every character has their strengths further exemplified while in Heat. For example, Victor gains access to a new attack, down back 1 plus 2, and his up 1 plus 2 deals significantly more damage and becomes unpunishable on block, as well as his sword stance down 2 also getting significantly buffed. In addition to that, all of your attacks now deal recoverable chip damage, whereas without heat, only certain attacks will. You also gain access to a powerful attack called a Heat Smash, kind of like a mini rage art or a super, using this attack will instantly deplete your heat meter, so use it wisely. There's so much more to this game, but this is meant to be a newbie's review, not a guide. So with the basics out of the way, let's get back to my Tekken journey. After a few battles in the arcade quest, I decided to hop into practice mode to start learning Victor's moveset, and maybe even lab out a basic combo or try out the game's built-in combo trials. Dang. Oh, I missed the last hit because I was at the wall! Come on, dude! Oh my god! Ah. Anyways, after spending a good hour or two in practice mode and learning a combo I can only describe as a noob trap because of how little damage it actually does, Ooh. I decided to just hop into ranked and get some experience. While I was obviously very new and still had no earthly idea what I was doing, it was going pretty well. Having a basic combo that could net me a solid 50 damage was pretty much carrying me, as well as down back force spam, a habit I have yet to break. Climbing the lower ranks of Tekken 8 is actually really easy. Most people don't have much experience or fundamentals yet, and you can't lose points until you reach the rank of warrior, so my extremely sound and tactical strategy of spam launchers and hope I don't get bodied for it worked pretty well up until the higher yellow to low orange ranks. 
Over time, I began looking into how I could improve my gameplay, starting with my combos. 2-2-2 two, two, two spam worked, but it wasn't very cool looking, and like I mentioned earlier, didn't do much damage compared to a more optimized combo. At this point, my lack of fundamentals wasn't biting me in the ass yet, so I found a pretty solid Victor combo video and basically just yoinked to that shit. As to be expected, the competition got progressively tougher as I climbed the ranks, with some opponents feeling like I had no way of dealing with them. Obviously, this comes down to a lack of experience, and more importantly, matchup knowledge. This game has 32 characters, and some of them are fucking weird, man. Yoshimitsu can become a helicopter and slide around on the floor. Zafina does... that? Ultimately, until you fought every character a substantial amount of times, you're gonna get knowledge checked to high heaven. He's beginning to believe. Figured that one out! <laughs> Luckily, that's where the game's replay system comes into the picture. Tekken 8 features a replay mode that not only allows you to view your past matches, but also shows you critical matchup info like missed punishes, duckable high strings, and throw breaks. It also lets you take control of either character at any time, so you can try out different strategies to see what might work the next time you're faced with the same situation. Nothing feels better than blocking a string and knowing exactly what move is best suited to punish it. Obviously, you can find that stuff out on your own just by playing and testing things out, but the replay system gives you a controlled environment where you can lab things out from the moment you got caught off guard in-game. I know Tekken isn't the first fighting game to implement this, but it's still such a welcome feature that, honestly, I don't take enough advantage of. Back to the topic of character knowledge, one of the most polarizing characters for me to fight is King. Shocking, I know. King is currently considered one of the best characters in the game, with some people even calling him problematic. This essentially boils down to the fact that King is one of the harshest knowledge checks in the game. You see, for most characters, breaking throws follows a pretty simple rule set. If they grab you with their left arm, you press 1 to break it. If they grab you with their right arm, you press 2 to break it. And if they grab you with both arms, you press 1 and 2 to break it. Easy, right? Well, King throws those rules out the window and says, Guess, forehead. Grabs that look like one breaks are actually two breaks. Some of his grabs are unbreakable and have to be ducked, which isn't unique to him, but it's still annoying. And his chain throws are pretty much just a 50-50 mash fest, praying to whatever god you worship that you can manage to break it before the heat death of the universe. Despite all of that, and how admittedly cheesy and scrub killery he is, over time, I honestly started to enjoy playing against him. Now, whether that's because I find the interactions, or lack thereof, enjoyable, or I've just gotten more experience with combating the five options online kings will typically use, I can't necessarily say. But all I know is, my feelings upon seeing that I've been put up against a king have shifted from, oh god, this is gonna be horrible, to, this'll be interesting. Getting a full combo punish because you called out a jaguar sprint grab gives you a dopamine hit all too similar to crack, I swear. Speaking of playing online, probably time to talk about it, right? So, how is it? Well, kind of a mixed bag. Honestly, for the most part, the game feels great to play online, but it's certainly not perfect. The game uses rollback netcode like most modern fighting games, but it's not immune to problems. You need a pretty solid internet connection to play the game without it stuttering mid-gameplay. And despite playing on Wi-Fi, yes, I am what's wrong with the world, thank you for noticing, most of my online games are pretty solid. But every now and then, you'll come across people who either have super spotty connection, or worse, their computer can't run the game. So God has to punish you as well for even being in the same lobby as them with nearly unplayable lag. You play the game like this. You genuinely play the game like this. Oh my God. You genuinely play the game like this. Bro, what?! I think his game just fucking crashed. On top of that, there's also the issue of pluggers, the Tekken community's term for rage quitters. Because disconnecting from a match doesn't count as a loss, people will artificially inflate their rank by just alt f 4 in the game anytime they're about to lose, and as far as I'm aware, there's no penalty for this. They get to keep their points, and you don't gain any. The developers have mentioned wanting to implement harsh punishment for mid-match quitting, but nothing major has happened yet, and while it really hasn't happened to me at all, which is surprising considering the character I play, it's still a really prevalent issue. All of this is to say that while the online is definitely flawed, it hasn't marred my enjoyment of the game. I'm hoping some of these issues can be ironed out later, but there's not much the developers can do about someone else's shitty internet or PC. That being said, it's still better than Smash's online. Back to the journey.
Eventually, I managed to claw my way out of orange ranks and reach the first red reg, Garyu. Around this time, I was watching a lot of content on YouTube about learning the game, namely from FeedyX, a professional Tekken player who goes very in-depth in his lessons about the game. I gotta say, seeing how enthusiastic some people are about teaching newcomers how to play was very encouraging to me, someone who was practically a fish out of water in this space of gaming that's existed for decades. The learning process, while still ongoing, is rough, and it doesn't feel great to get bodied, but nothing gives me more of a solid feeling of superiority than getting absolutely slaughtered in game one, only to come back with a reverse sweep the next two games, having adapted to my opponent's strategies. I'm locking the fuck in now, dude! Building on the whole it doesn't feel great to get bodied point, one really important piece of advice that, honestly, even I struggle to follow is to not worry about winning or losing. Yeah, seeing that big you lose text and how many points you just lost is frustrating, demoralizing even, but at the end of the day, it's pretty much just numbers and letters on a screen. The most important part about learning a game as difficult as Tekken is acknowledging that you suck that your opponents more often than not will have more experience than you, and that you don't know how to deal with every situation against every character. Oh no! Losing is a fundamental part of learning any game, especially fighters. As long as you take a lesson from every match, you're learning something. But I'm fairly certain you're- What was noise? You lose the sound of progress, my friend. Got your ass whooped, but were able to reliably punish a string your opponent used? That's a lesson you don't have to learn again, and you can start focusing on other parts of the matchup. Tech to King's Shining Wizard? That's progress! You saw him running at you and realized what he was more than likely going to do. Tried mashing on an opponent's plus frame move and got blown up for it? Now you know better. Every interaction with an opponent is a learning opportunity, whether you're on the winning or losing side of it, and that's info you can use either for the rest of the set to combat that specific person's game plan, or a permanent new understanding of how to fight that character. If you start getting tilted, take a break, go do something else, watch a replay, just sit out the queue for a bit. This game can be frustrating, especially with some of its more... What? Problematic aspects, but I promise you, it is worth it. This is one of the most fun and rewarding games I've played in a long time. It's absolutely daunting, but once you're in, you'll find it's not nearly as bad as you might think. Tekken is absolutely exploding in popularity right now, with people that would have never considered even playing a fighting game picking it up and having a great time, myself included. With events like the Sejam Tekken Slam highlighting streamers who are brand new to the series going out and beating each other's asses, the game's getting a ton of new eyes on it. I've heard people say that Tekken 8 is one of the hardest Tekken games to start with, and while that might be mechanically true, I think the fact that so many brand new players will be in the same camp as you is more than worth the confusion you're undoubtedly going to encounter at first. Sure, you're gonna get slapped six ways from Sunday starting out, but there's thousands of other people out there going through the exact same thing that I'm sure would love to have someone else to go through it with them, and just as many, if not more people, who would be more than happy to share their knowledge with you and help you on your journey. I... I think I just had that win kinda handed to me, not gonna lie. My journey is still just at its beginning, and I know for a fact that there's plenty more why didn't that hits, what the fuck that's pluses, and I totally should have won that's in my future, but I've had so much fun so far that I'm okay with that fact. If you've ever been on the fence about Tekken, or have been interested but felt like you wouldn't be good at it, you won't be, but that's okay, no one is at first, now's the time. Get in on the ground floor before people have figured out the game completely. Find a character you like, practice a combo, Get bodied, watch some FDX to learn some actually useful things, but most importantly, have fun and don't give up. If you've made it this far, I just wanted to say, first of all, how the hell did you even find me? But secondly, thank you so much for watching. I've been wanting to make this video for a while because as someone who, for the longest time, imagined it wasn't worth the effort to try and play fighting games and that I'd never be any good at it, I think it's important to show what it's like for someone just starting out, and that 
though it does take more time and brain power than other types of games, it's not the Sisyphean effort that you might think it is. This is my first time making a video like this, so if anything seems off or half-baked, then that's probably why, and I apologize. But I, I had fun with it. If you enjoyed, a like would be appreciated, and if you want to subscribe, that would also be great, as well as checking out my Twitch channel, where I sometimes stream. Also, make sure to check out Maximilian Dude, Feedy X, Sejam, and anyone else I mentioned or showed in this video. The rest of the video is just going to be a random assortment of clips that I've saved over the past month of playing, so enjoy, and thanks again for watching. Oh, damn it. I'm in your head! Alright. Oh, 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 oh. I got your number now, bitch. Oh, no. Frame trap, dude. Frame trap. Come on, dude. Really? Oh, my goodness. Mm. I'm stupid. Oh, wait. He's stupid. Oh, my God. <laughs> I didn't deserve to win that! <laughs> I don't know what your plan is, dude! What?! Oh, get fucked! Oh my god, get fucked! <laughs> Ooh, okay. <laughs> that was- I had him on lock. That was gross as shit, dude. And you got knowledge checked. Oh, wait. <laughs> there I go. Oh, God, we're going down. Okay. Oh, oh. Ouchie. God, hit him with the old bread and butter. <laughs> Gee, fucking geez, dude. That was a that was a sick fucking set. Yeah! <laughs>
Oh my god! Oh. I thought for sure I hit him. Sorry. <laughs> I win. Stole him!